Um, so just to introduce myself, I'm Libby Costin, Transition Specialist for the District. And um, I know I came to a meeting, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, but I talked kind of like an overview of transition services in the IEP. Um, so that's section five, and that is posted, I believe, on the YouTube page. So that would be good um, if you're not familiar with transition services to kind of have a base knowledge and then what that looks like in the IEP. Um, and then tonight, I am um, talking more about paths that are available after and then kind of how to start that. A conversation about transition services and what that looks like at an earlier age, and then just some um, things to um, All right. So just a brief overview again that um, the presentation last year was on section five, um, what it looks like in the IEP. And so uh, serv transition services are started on an IEP when that student turns 14 within the IEP year. So sometimes we do have 13 year olds who have transition services on their IEP if they'll be turning 14 um, within the span of that IEP year. And when we hear transition services, what we're thinking of there are the instruction activities and the support provided in the three areas of post-secondary education, employment, and independent living. So post-secondary education being anything after high school, um, employment, what type of career job, and then independent living, um, those skills like daily living skills, any type of skills that they would need to live um, a more independent life. And then um, what we wanna think about are what are those long-term goals after high school? And then how can we kind of backwards plan um, during high school and during middle school, and even if you want to start thinking about in elementary school um, to start reaching those goals. So starting from a young age, um, you might hear pins thrown around in a transition world, and what that stands for are the preferences, interests, needs, and strengths of a student. And um, it's really good to start these conversations earlier. You don't need to have that acronym to start thinking about what students are interested in, what their strengths are and what their needs are. Um, I think, especially in special education, we do tend to focus a lot on those needs um, and those deficits. And what's really great about transition services is we wanna focus on what are the students' strengths and interests and their preferences um, to try to find those long-term goals that can fit well into those positive attributes that our students can bring. Um, I was uh, saying the other day that unfortunately, a lot of our students aren't really aware of those strengths. And um, a lot of the time when we ask our, our students what their strengths are, they're very quickly to say, oh, I'm really good at math, or I'm really good at writing, or I'm really good at reading. And that's great. But how can we kind of think of strengths in a different manner? Um, what exactly are you doing that's great? And what can you um, how can that translate to a job? Or how can that translate to your academic success in college? Are you really good at being organized? Are you really good at following directions? Um, can you work really quickly? Those actual skills is what we want to focus on. And then, of course, making the students aware of those um, because we want them to feel a great confidence and success, but we also want them to be able to tell people um, what they're really good at. So then kind of translating that into long-term thinking. So first of all, we wanna think of what's the ultimate career path for a student. Um, obviously this can change, especially if you're asking students young. Um, I know for myself, my career path when I was younger is different than what I'm doing now, and that's totally fine. But to start thinking about what's the long-term goal, and then what are those educational requirements that are needed to reach this? Um, and then what are skills that are needed to reach this? So if a student says that they want to have a certain career, having them start to look at what are those requirements and then how can I start working towards those requirements after high school to reach that goal? 
And then also to think of goals that will utilize their strengths and interests, like I was saying before. And then what can be done now to start prioritizing those needs to achieve it? So of course, like I was saying, um, we tend to focus on those needs, those deficit areas, and we start setting goals around those. It's really important to prioritize the needs that are going to help them reach their long-term goal um, and working with their strengths and interests. And then lastly, what support will be needed? We all need support. We all need um, different aspects of a job or in education that's gonna support us um, for what we need the most. And then ways for, um, we need to start teaching our students ways for them to increase that self-advocacy so that they can have a supportive environment. Um, they need to start also being aware of this really helps me in a classroom or this helps me outside of the classroom and then how that is gonna be important um, in their long-term setting. So when we're thinking about um, <clears throat> transition services in the school setting, it's hard to know who's taking care of what. Um, is it the intervention specialist role? Is it the general education teacher's role? Is it administration role? And then um, as parents, what, what can we do to help? So kind of broken up here um, are some things that the school will do and then this, the things that parents can do. So um, under both, we of course have discussed the strengths and interests uh, for students. And then the school with transition service to just provide information, support, instruction towards those act, uh, transition activities in the IEP. And then also as a school setting, um, we can connect students with adult agencies which are those um, agencies you might hear like vocational rehabilitation or opportunities for Ohioans with disabilities. Uh, there's also Franklin County Board of Developmental Disabilities. When we hear adult agencies, those are services that continue after high school. And it's very important to get connected with them while in high school because they are a service that can continue after high school too. So the school can provide information on that. Um, and then as parents, again, discussing strengths and interests, um, something I often think about is, you know, even as, as adults, um, as, as people that are working, what are my own strengths and interests and how to discuss those and kind of have those conversations um, around students, around our children and showing them that there are different abilities and different um, strengths that we all all have. And then touring programs, there are a lot of programs in Columbus. Um, I'll, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that later. Um, and it's never too early to start seeing what's out there. There are a lot of resources, a lot of programs. And so touring them, you know, even if, you're, if your student's fairly young, just to see what's out there. And then again, kind of with that discussing of strengths and interests is to also just dis discuss jobs in the community. A lot of the time when I meet with students, um, they, you know, if, if they say they want to be a doctor, I ask them what their parents are and they're doctors. Um, if they want to be a teacher, I ask them what their parents are and they're typically teachers. Um, we, we only know what we know. And so a lot of the time our, our children are seeing our jobs and, and they think that's maybe the only job out there. So discussing different jobs in the community, you know, what other family members do. Um, even when you go out in the community to a restaurant or to a library and talk about the different jobs there um, is something you can do. And then advocating for essential transition skills in the IEP. When we were talking about, um, when I was talking about prioritizing those needs earlier, um, those are specific needs that you can put in the transition skills section. So if, um, if you're thinking you want your student to explore other jobs and you're doing that in the community, but you really want them to dive more into research online, discuss that with your um, IEP team. And that's something that can be put in the transition skills section. And then um, again, connecting with those additional resources. So um, if the school is providing this information about adult agencies, reach out and, and see what can be um, what resources can be provided and, and how you can connect with those additional resources.
Okay, so the big um, topic here that I'm going to talk about are kind of the pathways after high school. <clears throat> and um, the two areas that you kind of might hear about are social graduation versus accepting diploma. So when students meet their high school graduation requirements, most of the time we think after their um, fourth year in high school, they'll accept their diploma and they'll go on to their next step. But there's also the possibility of social graduation, which is where um, students who have an IEP under special education, IDEA, they can receive services until the age of 22. And because of that, there are other programs or services that can be done between those ages of around 18 to 22. Um, so I have this link and everything's hyperlinked um, that I can send out later, but this is kind of just a screenshot of the chart. So once students meet high school graduation requirements, the two options are to either graduate, take their diploma, and then they're no longer um, receiving special education services from the school district, they would exit high school services, you know, like what we traditionally think of when someone graduates. Um, but the other option is social graduation. And so everything in the pink over here on the left is for social graduation options. This is again where the district would hold on to the diploma. Um, students can still walk with their class. Some choose to do that and some don't and they can go on to additional programming, receive services. So the IEP continues and um, the IEP team must discuss and approve this as well. The reasoning behind it is that there are still deficits that students need to work on um, and still reasons that they need to go through additional programming before they accept their diploma. Um, if students do to socially graduate and then go to a program and they start the program and then they're like, you know, this actually isn't for me. I, I want to just start working or I actually want to go on and go to college. They can take their diploma at any time. They don't have to finish out a year. Um, they've met high school graduation requirements. So that diploma is theirs if they choose to take it. So on the left here, um, some of the programs that are available in Bexley, and um, they aren't all listed here. We can always talk with your IEP team to learn about additional interests. But some of these programs, the first three listed here, West Central Transition Program, Everybody Works, and the Campus-Based Transition Programs, which are WINGS, STEP, and Project Plus, are more entry-level job training programs. Um, they're focused on those generalized job training skills. And then they're also focused on independent living. And then there's the career center listed here. Um, some students will focus on their core academics in their four years of high school and then defer their diploma and go to two years at the career center. So that's an option as well. Um, there's a program through the Eastland Fairfield Career Center called Employability Prep. And that is more of a job training program as well that students can do after they reach their high school graduation requirements. And similar to a lot of the programs at the Career Center, they can also do that employability prep program while they're in school. And then Project Search, there's one at Nationwide Children's and one at Fairfield Medical Center. Um, this is a nationwide program. It is a one-year job training program where students go through the program and they, um, their goal is for students to be employed directly after. Um, and then, I believe most of the time they're in the hospital setting. Um, and then there is a four plus program at the Ohio School for the Deaf, which is similar to these uh, entry job training programs as well. And then on the right hand side, so students can go through social graduation and then they can always go over and accept their diploma. If you meet high school graduation requirements and you graduate, take your diploma, you cannot get that, um, give the diploma back to the school and go back and do any of these social graduation programs. So exiting and taking your diploma is a final decision. Um, the IEP ends, IEPs do not continue after high school. And uh, there are the opportunities for those adult agencies and disability services at a college setting to support. So some of our traditional um, pathways here are maybe just getting a job, going to a two-year or four-year degree, 
program, military, and then uh, traditional uh, trade school or apprenticeships are listed here. And then there's some other pathways. Um, this first box here are college certificate programs. So um, these programs, the, the one in our um, city is the OSU TOPS program, but these programs are where students most of the time are auditing courses on a college setting. Um, and they're also teaching those job skills. So the big thing to note when you're looking at these programs are to see if they're degree versus non-degree programs. And then if you go to this Think College website here, there are additional options all over the United States. There are adult workforce, workforce options at Eastland Fairfield, and there are a few adult project search programs as well in different warehouses. And then um, lastly, there are adult day programs. So students who have the waiver through uh, Franklin County Board of DD or another county board um, are able to go to these adult day programs as long as they have that. And again, this list is not exhaustive. Options are coming up all the time. Different programs are being built. So definitely talk to your IEP team about that as well. And then um, you can click on this Google Drive link right here, and that will take you to this page where all of these websites are hyperlinked. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. So when you look at section five, um, there's an overarching goal. It probably reads something like after uh, high school graduation, student will go to four-year college. Um, and then there's activities. The activities are what the school is actually responsible for. So that's the core um, instruction or support that would be given. And then if you look on section five, it, it does say like agency or person responsible. And so a lot of the time that's the intervention specialist is working on, um, maybe they're researching colleges, they're looking at requirements, they're doing any type of career exploration or working on money management. All of those activities and instruction are what the school's responsible for. So um, under section five, it'll say frequency in one of the boxes on the right. And that is, should be like weekly or monthly or one time, one time a semester. Like if it's something they're just applying to a program, that might just be one time a year. So that's what you would want to look at. Um, and you can advocate, you know, if you think that it needs to be more time, what, what would be appropriate for um, your student for that amount of frequency. And then um, as far as progress, so the way that transition uh, activities show progress and they come on the progress report are um, started, not started and completed. Because like you're saying, Rachel, they, the goals aren't written like our section six goals. So um, maybe the activity is um, practicing interview questions. So it's just very much, have they started it? Have they not started it? And have they completed it? And then that frequency is how much they would be doing it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, you can kind of see like what's gonna be most appropriate. I mean, transition activities, could be endless. I mean, we could, we, I could still work on some things, you know, with <laughs> independent living or whatever it might be. I mean, we all have different goals that we could work on that are career-based, education-based, or independent living-based. And then that's where it's prioritizing what is the most important need to get this student in high school ready for their goal after high school. Um, and absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's working with the IEP team to figure out what's realistic. And we don't, a lot of the time, unfortunately, I mean, students are really 
overwhelmed with schoolwork. So then having them also have to work every day on interview questions is probably not realistic and it's not what they need. But to figure out how can we kind of incorporate this all in, what's realistic for them to work on so that they are working towards that goal after high school, they are aware of different things that that will help them with those long term goals as well. Um, but yeah, definitely you can advocate for for what would be needed. And I think, you know, from what my experience has been at Bexley is that when or if a parent or a student comes forward and says, hey, we really need to work on this activity, you know, they have a deficit in this area as it's related to transition services, can it be added? Absolutely, let's add it. Um, so I think, yes, advocate for for what's needed. And I think start having those conversations so that the students also advocating like, no, I have no idea what my strengths are. Can I work on, can I work on that? Um, or whatever it might be. So I think, yeah, having those conversations and advocating is great. Yeah, so um, my role as a transition specialist at Bexley is support for school personnel which means that I support the intervention specialists with carrying out whatever it might be in the IEP. They write the IEPs, they're the ones that are responsible for the activities. When you see agency person responsible, it's intervention specialists. My license is, is an intervention specialist. Um, I definitely have some knowledge in the transition world now um, as I, sorry. Um, as I have experienced it and learned about it, but as far as carrying out the activities, the intervention specialists can do that and that is what their role is. Um, a lot of the time I do come in when we're starting to talk about adult agencies or, um, I just saw Maria's message. Um, for adult agencies or like touring programs that maybe the intervention specialists don't know as much about, um, those types of areas can come in. I'm always happy to come in and talk with the family, the students as whatever might be needed. Um, but definitely having the intervention specialists kind of head that up um, because they are the ones that are, are the case manager and providing those activities if that helps. Could be a possibility. What I've had some students do too is um, they might just extend their time. Like let's say they extend their entire high school career over five years and they just take kind of less of the career or those um, core academics, maybe junior and senior year because it's just too much. And then they might start the career center senior year and then go an extra year after or um, two years, just kind of helping if the core academics are too much, as well as thinking about this post-secondary plan or doing a career mm -hmm. center program, how can we stretch it over five, six, sometimes seven years, what might be needed for a student? So um, yeah, having those conversations early mm -hmm. with your team would be helpful in that instance. Um, and in those scenarios, the intervention specialists our um, guidance counselors at Bexley are really good at kind of figuring out what that looks like, how many classes they need for the career center, how many they need to graduate. Um, so kind of bringing everyone to the table is important at that point. 